Hello, everyone. So let's start uh, the introduction to chemistry course with this very simple concept, which is called the states of matter. So as we all know, we have three states of matter, right? The solid, liquid, and the gas, right? So if we take some examples of solids, we can have ice or the metals lying around or the table on which you're reading or your laptop or your computer. All these are the solid state, right? There's nothing new here. Now, what, is, what are the, some examples of the liquid state? The water that you are drinking, uh, the, the, the tea that you have in your home, all these are examples of like uh, the liquid state, right? The liquid uh, the state of matter. What are some examples of gas? Now, the air that we are engulfed around, that is an example of, 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 of the state of matter, which is a gas. The oxygen gas that you might have heard, nitrogen, uh, helium, all these kind of different gases are actually in the gas phase, right? It is a gas, it's a state of matter, which is a gas. Now, these are the, some of the simple concepts that we, we, we know how to recognize, how to, how to differentiate between these three states of matter, okay? So now that we know that, let's look into some of the properties that will be helpful to, for us to understand. Now, these properties are called intrinsic or extrinsic properties. Now, intrinsic properties are those properties which do not depend upon the shape and the size of the object. For instance, if you have a blade, the sharpness of the blade does not, so, so the density of the material, say aluminum or whatever that blade is made up of, does not depend on how big the knife is or how sharp the knife is. is. So therefore, density as a property is an intrinsic property, which is size and shape independent. That intrinsic property do not depend upon the size and the shape of the object. For example, density. You might have heard about another property called the refractive index. So that can be another good example of intrinsic property or viscosity of the fluid. It does not matter if you have a, a gallon of um, honey or like a teaspoon of honey. The, 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 the viscosity remains the same. So that is a good example of intrinsic property, okay? On the other side of the coin, we have extrinsic properties. Those properties that do depend on the shape and size. Very good example, the sharpness, right? The sharpness of the blade is such a property that actually depends upon the shape of the, of the object. Another uh, extrinsic property could be the mass of the object. If you have a bigger, uh, if you have a large amount of material, the mass will be larger than uh, a smaller amount. So that, those kind of properties are called extrinsic properties, okay? Now, let's see what are the different types of matter? Now, you might have come across this term homogeneous, okay? What does homogeneous mean? Now, so let's look into the, 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 the making of the word so that we can have some idea about what this, what this means. Homo comes from the Greek word homos, which means same, right? So we get some idea about what kind of uh, property are we talking about. So we are talking about those intrinsic properties, so we know what intrinsic properties are, we're talking about those intrinsic properties that remain the same if the intrinsic property of a type of matter remain the same, we call that matter a homogeneous matter, okay? Simple enough? Okay, on the flip side, we have heterogeneous matter, uh, types of matter, types of systems in which the intrinsic properties are different and they are separated. So different parts of a heterogeneous system will be made up of different kinds of material, different kinds of matter, and they will have a very sharp boundary between the two. So there will be a very sharp boundary between one type of matter to the other. Now both of them together will make a heterogeneous system. Now for example, uh, say the stick. So we know that this stick is a homogeneous material in itself. Now, the air around the stick is a different phase. Right? It's, it's, it's a different material. No, let's not come to the word phase just yet. So this, uh, this uh, stick is a homogeneous uh, type of matter because it seems that this, the, 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 the material that the stick is made up of is, 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 is the same everywhere, right? 
Now, there is a sharp boundary between the stick and me, or between the stick and the air around it. So, the, so these kinds of different systems um, can, when they come together, they make a heterogeneous system. For example, like if you take a pitcher of water, okay? So the pitcher of water has water, it has ice, it has some like water vapor inside it, which is on top of the, of the layer of the, of the liquid. Now all these three have a very sharp boundary between each other, right? So you can see the water differently from the ice and from the water vapor that is above. So all these different have sharp boundaries between them. So that whole system can be a, a, a heterogeneous system which has different kinds of material which are separated by sharp boundaries. So this whole system becomes a heterogeneous system and the homogeneous parts of such systems become a phase. Right? So the pitcher of water is made up of solid ice, liquid water, and the water vapor out, like, on top. So this whole thing, the pitcher of water is a heterogeneous system, but that heterogeneous system is made up of such parts which, are, which have intrinsic properties of the same, same and are differentiated by sharp boundaries. So the solid ice is a sharp boundary, it's a different thing, right? So this solid ice is one phase. The liquid water is another phase, right? So these are the different phases. Uh, the, this, is the, uh, this is how we use the word phase, like the homogeneous parts of such systems, it's called a phase. Now, I have uh, like highlighted this term sharp boundaries because we see in, such, uh, in, in many systems that the, the system changes its properties very gradually. And there is no sharp boundaries between the between the different systems between the different uh, phases in the in the system in that case we still consider the whole thing as homogeneous for example like if you take the atmosphere around us so we see that the composition of uh, of the atmosphere is not exactly the same at all the places on the earth right if you move from one place to another the atmospheric composition changes the density the pressure those kind of things change, uh, the, 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 the composition changes, but whatever that change is, it is a gradual change. There is no sharp boundary between uh, the composition, between the atmosphere here and like 10 feet apart. So that, be, that part of the atmosphere in which, uh, that part of a system in which there is no sharp boundaries between the two, but there is a gradual change still become a part of the, of the homogeneous system. So we still consider atmosphere as a homogeneous system, okay, and not a heterogeneous system. Why? Because the, there, there is a change in properties, but that change in properties is very gradual, and that's what makes the homogeneous system.